Hey folks, thanks for joining me. Just a quick video demo here. I wanna show you some really cool stuff using PowerShell Universal and DBA tools uh, to manage your SQL Server environment. If you haven't heard of PowerShell Universal, it's a really great like suite of features. Uh, you can build APIs, you can build full websites, uh, dashboards, there's jobs that you can schedule. Uh, check out this website, uh, powershelluniversal.com if you haven't already seen it. Um, but we're gonna take a look at a demo with it today. So I'm on my jump box now uh, and I've got Visual Studio Code open. If you want to get PowerShell Universal, if you don't already have it, uh, you can do install module Universal to get it from the PowerShell gallery. And then you need to run install PSU server uh, to install the Universal dashboard as a service. Uh, you need to run that as admin since you're going to create a service. We can check out the service with get service. It's called PowerShell Universal. Pretty standard there. Let's go ahead and open the web portal. The first time you open this after you install it, you'll need to set up an admin user. You can see I'm logged in as SQL admin. I've already done that and I've logged in today. You'll notice some things are blurred out on the dashboard. I'm running an unlicensed version. Uh, there's a lot of extra features that you get if you have a paid license. So if you're using it for uh, more complicated things, I'd really check that out. Uh, Adam, the maintainer, does a really great job of adding new features and, and it's definitely worth checking that out. But for today, we're going to look at APIs to start with. Um, let's go ahead and create our first endpoint or our first API. I'm going to copy this code. I'm going to head back to the dashboard. Under APIs on the left, you can go to endpoints. I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, and you see I've got some here already. We'll talk through those in a minute. But for our first one, we're going to go create endpoint and add in the URL. It's going to be hello world. The method is going to be get because we're just going to be getting data at this point. I can add a description. And on the security pane, you'll notice that authentication is checked. I'm going to uncheck this just for simplicity for today, but this uh, tool allows you to add authentication to your endpoints, which is really neat. I'll press OK and you can see it's been created. And if I now go to the edit code button, I can add in my script. So basically, this PowerShell will run whenever this API endpoint is hit. So whatever you add in here, this PowerShell will be executed and the results will be returned. If I come back into Visual Studio Code, you can use invoke rest method to call these endpoints. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the localhost 5000, which is my local version of Universal, and the hello world endpoint. The method is get, and you'll see down here in the bottom I've got hello world has been returned. Let's get a little more complicated. So I'm going to go ahead and run this connect DBA instance. I've got three SQL instances that are available in my environment, uh, and I'm just going to select a few properties from them. This is using DBA tools. I'm just getting a, a few bits of information that I want to display uh, later on, but I want to expose these through my API. If I come back to my API endpoints in Universal, you can see I've got databases get database. I'm going to edit the code here and I'm going to put in Oh, sorry, this is get instances. Let's go back here. So SQL instances get SQL instance. I already have the code in here, so it's ready to test. When I come down here, I can do invoke rest method again. This time I'm calling the SQL instances get SQL instance endpoint. Again, a get method. And you can see that the same data is returned by calling that API that, that was called from just running the connect DBA instance in my shell. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and create one for getting database information. So databases get database endpoint. If I come back into Universal and I go into here, I'm going to replace the code that's in there with this simple version. We're going to build on this as we go. You can actually test this right from the Universal uh, dashboard also. Here on the test pane, you can press invoke right here. And it'll go ahead and show a 200 response, which is successful. And then you can see the data is returned. I can also do that in VS Code. Again, invoke REST method, this time calling the databases get databases, still the get method, and you can see my database information is returned. So this is just uh, hard coded to get data from the SQL 1 instance. But what if I want to specify the instance when I call the endpoint? We've got two options here. The first one is to add a SQL instance uh, parameter to the endpoint. So if we come back here, to my endpoints, you can see I've got databases, get databases, and then colon SQL instance. 
What that means is that whenever I pass in a SQL instance, that can then be used within the code. You can see that the parameter comes through with the name that you give it. So that means that I can call these with just adding SQL1 to the end or SQL2. So if I call databases get databases slash SQL1, I get the database information for SQL1. And if I do the same for SQL2, you can see I'm now getting the information from the SQL2 instance. That's pretty neat. Uh, you can also pass in the information through uh, the body of the request. So in this case, I've gone back to my databases get databases endpoint. And this is the one I mentioned we're going to build on. In this example, I'm going to go ahead and get the body from the request. Uh, it comes in as JSON, so I'm going to convert it from JSON into a PowerShell object. And then I can use that object in my PowerShell. So in this case, I'm saying input data dot SQL instance. And that's, can, that's going to be how I pass my SQL instance in. Oops, I haven't saved that, so let's go ahead and save it. And if I come down here, you can see this is how we're going to call uh, the rest method now. So I've got a JSON body, which is just the pro uh, parameter name of SQL instance, and then the value of SQL1. And I'm specifying that the content type is JSON. So let's go ahead and call that. And you can see the database information from SQL1 is returned. Super cool. But what happens if I add in a, an invalid parameter, right? What happens if I say the server name is SQL1? Well, you can see you get, a, you get an error, and it's not a very easy to read error. So what we can do is we can handle that, right? Because we're just right in PowerShell. So if we know anything about error handling in, in PowerShell, we can use try catch uh, to catch the error and then return something more useful. So in this case, we're going to return the exception message that uh, that is thrown. So if I paste this code in and save it, you can see I'm actually using control S, which is really nice. It saves uh, the code for you. If I rerun that command, you can now see I'm getting a slightly better error cannot bind argument to parameter SQL instance because it is null. But it still doesn't explicitly say, hey, you need a SQL instance parameter. So what we can do is we can handle that uh, even better by kind of passing the input data that's passed in and seeing if there is a SQL instance uh, in the JSON that's passed in. And if not, we can say, please provide a SQL instance. So let's go ahead and copy this. We'll paste it in here and again, save that so it pops up saved. And if we rerun it, we can see, please provide a SQL instance in the body of the request. Nice. Much easier uh, to be able to use the APIs. We want to make these as user friendly as we can. Perfect. All right, we're going to add one final uh, endpoint for our dashboard. And this is going to be a post method, which means we're going to enact some action. Something's going to happen when we hit this endpoint. Uh, and it's going to be called databases backup. So you can probably guess what's going to happen. Uh, but in the code, we are going to make sure we have a SQL instance pra uh, parameter provided and a database parameter. Uh, there is the option to pass in a backup type. If you don't specify that, I'm going to default it to full. And then I'm going to run backup DBA database for those properties that have been returned. I've already got that in here in my database backup uh, endpoint. You can see that the method here is post and the code is what I've just shown you. So now what we can do is we can do a backup with our endpoint calling SQL instance SQL1 and the database MSDB. And that'll actually go out and run a full backup of the MSDB database on SQL1 through calling this API. Now this is super neat because you can expose uh, some database management stuff or some PowerShell scripts as API endpoints to the rest of your team, right? Your developers, your other database administrators, this can get integrated into apps and stuff, which is what I'm going to show you next. Now, I'm not going to show you the code for the dashboards, but I've, be, I've created a dashboard here called SQL Dashboard. I will show you the code quickly. It's written in PowerShell. You build these dashboards in PowerShell. I'm creating some pages. I've got a home page. I've got a SQL instance page. I'm using these, command, uh, these functions from the universal uh, PowerShell module to lay out my page creating a table to display some data. And you can see I'm using my API endpoints to get the data from my environment. All right, let's take a look at the app here. So here's my home page. Could use some improving. I'm not going to say I'm a great web developer. But on the left here, you can use SQL instances. Here's my SQL instance page. It's hit my API endpoint and then display the data in a table. Also, the uh, instances here are links. So if I go to SQL 1, 
you can see that I pull through to the database page and I'm getting the databases for SQL 1. Now, unfortunately, it looks like I'm not a very good DBA right here because my full backups are from a while ago, 2023. But I've also got this button here, which is going to call my backup endpoint and it's going to kick off a full backup for the AdventureWorks database. You can see that's been completely uh, completed successfully and I've now got a backup very recently, so I'm feeling better about that database. I can also use this to change to see databases on other instances. So here's my databases on SQL 2, worse on the backups here, and my databases on SQL 3. Now, this one you're going to notice takes a long time to return. I only had a few databases on the other instances, and so the dashboard was quick, it was responsive. But the, uh, the point here is that we need to think about how we manage our, our estates at scale, right? This instance has, I think, somewhere around 500 databases on it at this point. Uh, and so this API call is literally just going to get all of those databases, all that information, so that it can display it on this page. I haven't said, just get me top 10. I haven't said, uh, it's going to time out. Like, it's just going to keep working until it can display all the databases. Here you go. Now, you can see on the right-hand side, there's a lot of them. This is not really great for dashboard design, right? And so we need to think about that ahead of time uh, before, we de before we design these dashboards. The nice thing is that you can do all this in PowerShell and in Universal. So if I come back to my PowerShell Universal uh, admin pane, you can see I've got a dashboard version two. And in this one, I'm doing server-side paging to be able to make this more responsive. So if I go to the database pane and I choose SQL 1, you can see it comes up pretty fast, but that one did anyway, right? There's only seven databases, but you can see I'm getting page one, which is just one to five, and I can scroll through these now. Let's go ahead and go to SQL 3, and you'll notice that this is just as fast. That's because it's only loading the five results we need to show this page. I can now scroll through five results at a time. Every time I do this, it's going to call another, um, uh, it's going to make another query to the instance and get the next five databases. Now, this one I wrote actually not using the API, but instead using uh, T-SQL. And you can do that uh, in, I'll show you in VS Code instead of there, because it will be a little easier to see. But if I open up my SQL version 2 dashboard, you can see I've again got my table to display some data. And if I scroll down here, I'm still using, this is the database page. I'm still using the API to get the SQL instances. Uh, but instead of using the API to get the databases, I'm going to build a SQL query using, uh, basically using whether I want to order it. I didn't show you that, but you can also, uh, you can also search, change, uh, sort the table based on these uh, values now. So I'm going to add in like an order direction and an order by depending on which column is clicked on. And then I'm going to run a T-SQL query, still using DBA tools, still using PowerShell. But what I can do is I can inject uh, the variables to basically get the rows that we want. So we're using offset, rows, fetch, next, page size uh, to be able to get just five rows and then the next five rows. So one thing to keep in mind when you're building out these dashboards is to make sure you're doing it in kind of a scalable way, depending on your environment. Uh, but this tool is super flexible and you can make some really nice dashboards. Uh, I've got a lot of ideas of how to make this one better. Uh, so maybe we'll see that in the future, but thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed the video.